everybody, Craig Warwick here with episode 5 of my Secret Santa custom project for 2018 in which I am making the Fantastic Four villain, the Psycho Man. And in the previous episode you would have seen me sculpting this guy here and in this episode I'm going to be painting him. So I've got my Iwata CR airbrush and uh, Silver Jet, what do we call that thing? Compressor? So I'm going to be airbrushing him. Um, I'm going to put on some black primer and then grey and then uh, white to sort of bring out the details and give him a nice base for me to put the colour on top of. And then I'm going to probably, I don't really know what I'm going to do. <laughs> really, I've not really got the colour scheme set in my head but he's basically green and white. Um, so it shouldn't be too difficult and I'll also be using my Citadel um, Games Workshop paints um, with a brush and just uh, picking out the highlights. So hopefully this will go quite quick as the sun just smacks me right in the face there. Good on you Scotland, good one. And there it's gone. Uh, anyway, um, let's go on with this, let's get painting. And just as a reminder, this is how we left Psycho Man at the end of last episode. So I disassembled him, which makes painting a lot easier. It lets me get to all his nooks and crannies. And I used my airbrush to paint the whole thing with black primer. Then I angled grey primer on top of that and then white primer on top of the grey. It gives it very natural sort of highlights with the black creating the shadows from the bottom and the white creating the light from the top. And it also helps when I come to colour it with the green here. The black primer creates the dark green and the white primer creates light green, creates very natural shadows. Where I want to keep the white, I use masking tape along with masking fluid. You can see me painting that on here. And then I spray green all over it. Then I can just peel the tape and fluid off and reveal the preserved clean, nice shaded white underneath. And here's all of Psycho Man's separate painted pieces. Okay, so I've given him all a few coats of this UV resistant Krylon matte acrylic coating and um, it just really brings all the colours together. And now I just really have to assemble him and we'll see what he looks like. Um, but yeah, when you do this, well what I do, when I do this, um, I try to articulate all the points to make sure that, uh, you know, I give it a coating one way, articulate the points, give it a coating the other way so that the you know, every point, you know, the inside of the elbows, then artic articulate it, get the back of them, make sure it's all getting a coating of that. Um, but it doesn't solve paint rub, um, because uh, that's all dealt with at the early stage of prepping your figure, but it um, helps just general chipping, wear and tear, and it just sort of brings the finish of all these different kind of paints down to the same level, makes it all look like a unified piece. So let's get this guy assembled. So what you can't really see me doing in this um, time lapse here is using my heat gun to um, heat up the sockets so that I can then um, push the, the pegs in and they should all click together and start becoming the figure. You have to be careful when using heat at this point of course because it can uh, warp the paint and make it bubble so just take it very slowly and it had always been my plan to disassemble and reassemble him so I've planned for this to happen and I've sort of, you know, I've left the, the pegs out and his legs there and um, because I knew I was going to have to fit these leg frames over the top at the final stage once they'd been painted, been painted underneath them so I'd, uh, you know, planned to glue them in place right towards the end and uh, have his lower legs stay off until that point and then attaching his lower leg to his knee was just a matter of heating them and then putting the peg back through. Um, I had to use some pliers and I had to use uh, some other random tools to try and push that through. It's quite difficult um, to get in without totally cracking open the sculpt and everything, but I got there in the end with just a little bit of minor damage, but you'll see that later. I'm 
just applying a little bit of glue here and there so it all fits together nicely. And really that's him coming together finally. Um, this is the Psycho Man and the final touch is of course to pop his head on there. Okay, so that's him finished up. The assembly was alright, pretty okay. Um, I did struggle with these and I need to go in and clear up um, some areas where I was super gluing and the paint got stuck to my finger and I tore it away a little. Also, I do need to go in here and that was, you know, I used far too much force here and uh, um, butchered this a little. But that's okay because I was going to go in anyway and sculpt over those peg holes which I had left out to the last minute because I wanted to disassemble and reassemble him. But yeah, that's all done. I think he's looking pretty good. And his control box. There we go. Looking fine. And yeah, there is a little bit of a secret to this control box. It's not some of my finest work, you know, it's not quite as um, clean as I would like it to be, but um, this has a uh, Get it. Fear. Doubt. And hate. So yeah, I didn't really catalogue me making this because I didn't really know if it was going to turn out at the end of the day. But there's three switches there at the back. And there's three LEDs inside. And um, this box is held on by magnets and that's where the batteries are. So yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, so there's also along with the magnets that are in the base so he can hold it in his hand. And the Omega Red articulation. Oh. Yeah, then I should let him reach across and be posed as if he's pressing the button. That was really difficult to do. So what I did at the end of the day was, you saw me sculpt this part. Oh. Fear, doubt, hate. And then I cast this in clear resin, because I needed the light to shine through it. So I cast it, made a mould, and cast it in clear resin. And so that's the top piece of this box is like this. It's a clear piece that the light shines through from the LEDs that are within it. The LEDs just have a little bit of translucent Tamiya paint on it. Um, and because I sculpted in the letters, Fear, Doubt and Hate, that was taken up by the mould in the cast. And that came out. I just put some black paint in there. It's not quite as tidy as I would like, to be honest. But, um, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't go without this. So that worked out well. Um, his articulation and his chest works. Everywhere else, he doesn't really have a huge amount of movement at the legs, this, even though I use the Procreate. Um, you know, at least it doesn't like shatter when he moves forward because there is a tiny bit of flexibility. But um, uh, yeah, it's good. And he, you know, everywhere else articulates well. These are very tight when I tried to put them on, but that's fine. And his head articulates. I did scuff at his chin a little when I was assembling him, so I'll repaint that. Um, but his head articulates quite well inside that collar. And uh, yeah, his eyes light up. And there's light coming through the side of his face as well. And hopefully you can see it coming through some of the little lines. So yeah, I cast his head in translucent resin. And there's a... So around the back there's a switch. Switches it on and off. And there's the batteries inside this bit here. So it's again held on by magnets. And there. 
So yeah. Please ignore that paint chip on his chin. But yeah, so this is all translucent plastic at the side. My original idea, this was sort of from the ultimate um I probably need to change the batteries, they're quite dull. <laughs> um the ultimate uh, Psycho Man had the sort of mechanical parts visible through the sides of his face and I really liked that and I tried to emulate it uh, but wasn't able to. My original idea was that I would have his faceplate separate from the robotic face that's underneath. Try and get that out of the glare. So I sculpted this robotic face and the faceplate to go over that. And then I would, you know, sort of paint this and the light would shine through the bits that are unpainted and illuminate the mask. But when I, I tried that, there just wasn't enough light actually coming through the painted part to illuminate the eyes and the, the other cracks in his face. So um, I had to sort of abort that removable separate faceplate part. Um, and it's just glued on there essentially. But there is a, you can see that it's still, the structure of it is still that way. But what I did instead was to make a separate second head for him, which makes use of the underlying robotic face that's under there and a cracked sort of faceplate. Because remember, I did want to make it clear that this was a robotic construct and not an actual person. So yeah, I just, you know, took a second cast of the faceplate and cracked that away and um, that exposed underneath. So this is half painted here. Um, I probably need to trim this down a little to fit on the neck peg better. I don't know if it's fine. So yeah, I've got that. And the light again shines through. Okay. I could maybe put a bit of a red tint on there, but I didn't want to make it too Terminator-like, you know? because it's already quite like that. Um, but you can see there isn't quite as much light coming through as on the normal head. But yeah, getting the LED in here was um, It's a challenge. You can't put it... If you want the head to articulate, you can't put it in the actual head. This is something that Toy Biz, God bless them, sort of solved with light up eyes in their sort of Human Torch movie figure. They put a, an LED in the neck peg. So I've just drilled up a hole through the disc of the neck into the head and then drilled out... Um, uh, what should I say? Drilled out the... What is this? This is the actual neck peg itself and then filled it with some hot glue and jammed the LED up inside there so that, you know, it can still articulate uh, forward and back without sort of tangling the wires and stretching them and breaking them because the wires are going down and they're all inside his chest and then the head just rotates on the peg and all the light comes through There we go. That's that's the Psycho Man. With light up emotion manipulating features. So that's the end of them. That's the end of the Psycho Man. So I don't know where he's going in the world or who he's going to. I hope whoever receives him likes him. Um, the next video you will see from me is a, a showcase of this guy. A more, um, essentially a video that people can look at without having to wade through these Secret Santa diaries. But um, then after that, I will be um, receiving my gift, I hope. 
and I'll be very, very happy to receive that. I don't know when that will be, of course, and I don't know when these are going live. Likely some point in December. So I hope you're all having a happy festive season, and I hope you've enjoyed me uh, making this figure, and I've really appreciated you in joining me on the journey of fear, doubt, and hate. So, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video anyway. Once again, thank you very much. Until then, pour on the power. Bye-bye.